Hi, it's Janet Sabrin 007. I'm uh, here to read The Master Key System by Charles Hanel. It'll be in 24 one-week lessons. This is ch chapter one, the first lesson. This is how it begins. That much gathers more is true on every plane of existence, and that loss leads to greater loss is equally true. Mind is creative, and conditions, environment, and experiences in life are the result of our habitual or predominant mental attitude. The attitude of mind necessarily depends upon what we think. Therefore, the secret of all power, all achievement, and all possession depends upon our method of thinking. This is true because we must be before we can do. We can do only to the extent which we are, and what we are depends on what we think. We cannot express powers that we do not possess. The only way by which we may secure possession of power is to become conscious of power, and we can never become conscious of power until we learn that all power is from within. There is a world within, a world of thought, and feeling and power of light and life and beauty and although invisible its forces are mighty the world within is governed by mind when we discover this world we shall find the solution for every problem the cause for every effect and since the world within is subject to our control all the laws of power and the possession are also within our control the world without is a reflection of the world within what appears without is what has been found within. In the world within may be found infinite wisdom, infinite power, infinite supply of all that is necessary, waiting for enfoldment, de development, and expression. If we recognize these potentialities in the world within, they will take form in the world without. Harmony in the, the world within will be reflected in the world without by harmonious conditions, agreeable surroundings, the best of everything. It is the foundation of health and a necessary essential to all greatness, all power, all attainment, all achievement, and all success. Harmony in our world within means the ability to control our thoughts and to determine our, for ourselves how any experience is to affect us. Harmony in the world without results in optimism and affluence. Affluence within results. Affluence within results in affluence without. The world without reflects the circumstances and the conditions of consciousness. The consciousness within. If we find wisdom in the world within, we shall have the understanding to discern the marvelous possibilities that are latent in this world within, and we shall never be given the power to make possibilities manifest in a world without. As we become conscious of the wisdom in the world within, we mentally take possession of this wisdom, and by taking mental possession, we come into actual possession of the power and wisdom necessary to bring into manifestation the essentials necessary for our most complete and harmonious development. The world within is the practical world in which the men and women of power generate courage, hope, enthusiasm, confidence, trust, and faith, by which they are given the fine intelligence to see the vision and the practical skill to make the vision real. Life is an unfoldment, not a, not a creation. What comes to us in the world without is what we already possess in the world within. All possession is based on consciousness. All gain is the result of an accumulative consciousness. All loss is the result of a scattering of consciousness. Mental efficiency is contingent upon harmony. Discord meets confusion. Therefore, he who would acquire power must be in harmony with natural law. We are related to the world without by the objective mind. The brain is the organ of this mind and the cerebrospinal system of nerves puts us in conscious communication with every part of our body. The system of nerves responds to every sensation of light, heat, odor, sound and taste. When this mind thinks when this mind thinks correctly 
when it understands the truth, when the thoughts sent through the cerebrospinal nervous system to the body are constructive, these sensations are pleasant, harmonious. The re result is that we build strength, vitality, and all constructive forces. Forests are all con <laughs> The result is that we build strength, vitality, and all constructive forces into our body. But it is through the same objective mind that all distress, sick sickness, lack, limitation, and every form of discord, discord and harmony is submitted to our lives. It is therefore through the objective mind, by wrong thinking, that we are related to all dis destructive foes. If we, are, if we are, are related to the world within the subconscious mind, the solar plexus is the organ of this mind. The sympathetic system of nerves never over presides over all objective sensations such as joy, fear, love, emotion, um, respiration, imagination, and all other subconscious phenomena. It is through the subconscious that we are connected to the universal mind and brought to relation with the infinite constructive forces of the universe. It is the coordination of the two centers of our being and that the understanding of their functions, which is the great secret of life. With this knowledge, we can bring the objective and subjective minds into conscious cooperation and thus coordinate the infinite and the finite. Our future is entirely our own control. It is not at the mercy of any capricious or uncertain external power. External power. All power that there is, that there is, but w all agree that there is but one principle in, or consciousness pervading the entire universe, occupying all space, and being essentially the same kind of the same kind of, at every point of its presence. It is all powerful, all wisdom, and always present. And thoughts are, and thoughts and things are within itself. It is all in all. There is but one consciousness in the universe able to think, and when it thinks, its thoughts become objective things to it. As this consciousness is omnipresent and must be present within every individual, each individual must be a manifestation of that omnipresent, potent omni omniscient and omnipresent consciousness. As there is only one consciousness in the universe that is able to think, it necessarily follows that your consciousness is identical to the universal consciousness, or in other words, all mind is one mind. There is no dogging this conclusion. The consciousness that forces in your brain cells in the same is, is the same conscious which focuses in the brain cells and every other of every other individual. Each individual is but the individualization of the universal, the cosmic mind. The universal mind is static or potential energy. It is simply it can be it can manifest only through the individual, and the individual can manifest only through the universal. They are one. The ability of the individual to think is, a, is his ability to act on the universal and bring it into manifestation. Human consciousness consists only in the ability of man to think. The mind in itself is, is believed to be a subtle form of static energy from which arises the activities called thought, which is the dynamic process of mind. Mind is static energy. Thought is dynamic energy. The two phases of the same thing. Thought. Thought is therefore the vibratory force formed by converting static and mind into dynamic mind. As the sum of all attributes As the sum of all attributes are 
contained in the universal mind, which is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. These attributes must be present at all times in their potential form in every individual. Therefore, when the when the individual thinks, the thought is compelled by its nature to embody itself in in an objectivity or condition which will correspond to its origin. Every thought, therefore, is a cause and every condition an effect for this reason. It is absolutely essential that you control your thoughts so as to bring forth the only desirable conditions. All power is from within and is absolutely under your control. It comes through the exact knowledge and by voluntary exercises of, ex of exact principles. It should be plain that when you acquire a thoroughest understanding of this law and are able to control your thought processes, you can apply it to any condition. In other words, you will have come into conscious cooperation, operation with omnipotent law, which is the fundamental basis of all things. The, the universal mind is the life principle of every atom, which is in existence. Every atom is continually striving to manifest more life, more life. All are intelligent and all are seeking to carry out the purpose for which they were created. The majority of mankind lives in the world without 